Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm here with another video and in today's video I'm gonna show you guys step by step how to open up, how to clean up and do your own service for your PlayStation 3 Slim version. This particular one, it's a PlayStation 3 Slim. The exact model for this one, it's a CECH-2011A. And this applies pretty much to any PlayStation 3 Slim version. So in this video, uh, we're gonna start tearing it down to the bottom. And before we start, we need a couple of tools. And I'm gonna go through with the tools. So what you need to do is to grab yourself an opening tool. I really recommend you guys to grab the iFixit tool set. They come with a just uh, the screw set and also they have a set with the opening tools and then tweezers and everything else. They include these tools that we're gonna be using, some of these. But if you don't wanna buy this whole set, you can buy only the opening, the screwdriver set. And then you will need a, a few tweezers okay and then that, that'll be all so one or two tweezers and a screwdriver set so let's get into it first thing first we want to remove the screws on the bottom of the console on this one there's a two rubber covers are already fell, fallen off these rubber covers are exactly as this one over here to remove it you just have to lift it up with the tweezers and it will come out pretty easy so you have to remove one two three covers you do not need to remove this cover because there's no screw under this one so remove this one two back and one right by the the sony logo in this side. and you want to open up this cover right here just lift it up pull it to one side Next, also you need to remove these covers down here. So with a pointy tweezers or something like that, you can just remove these covers. So remove this one, remove this cover over here, remove this cover at the back. And here there's a warranty label. You wanna peel this warranty label off and you wanna lift up this cover over here underneath. All right, next we're gonna start on screwing everything. So grab yourself the screw bit Phillips number one from this set. So Phillips one, and we're gonna remove the big screws. All right, all the screws are the same size, so don't worry about mismatching this. So leave to one side. With the same bit, we're gonna remove this blue screw. This is for the hard drive. Go ahead and remove this one. Next, you're gonna remove the hard drive by pulling this cover to the one side towards the other. It's gonna come only about half a centimeter out and then you just wanna lift it up. Next, you wanna pull this handle outward, this cable, and then you just wanna Pull the hard drive outside. This is your hard drive. This is a Toshiba 120 gig. Next, there's a three screws on the front where you remove the hard drive on the tiny one, black ones over here. These are the torque screw and they have a tiny lock in a pin inside the screw. So you cannot use a normal screw. You have to use the torque that has a little tiny hole in the middle. So these are called secure torque and we're going to be using secure torque number let me see what number was this nine so go ahead and remove these three screws they are the same size all right now that we remove all the screws at the bottom you want to close this one so you don't break it flip it in normal position and what you want to do, you want to lift it up from the back corner, from the back, back end, just the top cover, and bring it towards the front. 
just like that and then you can lift it up you can go ahead and clean up the dust in here and or maybe wash it out it's a plastic so but look at this it's pretty dirty inside so what you want to do you want to work first on the power supply unit we want to remove this power supply before we remove it we need to disconnect this 12 volt rail jack so pull it out remove 120 volt cable just pull it out now what what i want to do i want you to grab yourself a screwdriver with a plastic handle and nothing is going to happen if you touch these pins you want to shorten it out like this for about five to ten seconds so just shorten it up for five to ten seconds and let go what this does is just going to discharge all the capacitors if there is any charge inside the unit okay once we did that we're going to be using Phillips again number zero we're going to remove this screw on this side these are the tiny screws and the one on the other side exactly opposite side is the same screw type. now we're going to lift up this power unit this side is going to be really loose but on this side there's a two pins holding it so you have to pull it up straight so bring it up and bring your hand over wiggle it around and it will come out just pull it straight up these two pins right here they go through here this contact right there all right now that we remove the power unit remember the power unit you can use an air can or compressed air to blow through here or uh, blow it through the back end so we can remove all the dust from inside down here now what we have we need to remove a whole bunch of cables we need to remove the 12 volt power cable from the board so just pull it out pull the cable out doesn't matter which way it goes in first now rip these papers pull the 12 volt for the optical drive rip this tape right there and unhook this uh, Wi-Fi jacks just what you want to do you want to put the flat screwdriver underneath and just softly pull it out and then pull this cable out bring it to one side to remove this ribbon cable you need to pull this brown jack upward so bring it up like about 20 degrees it goes all the way it goes and then you can just slide this ribbon flex cable upward so now all the way to the other side here there's a fan cable connector right there so I'll rip this paper off grab this connector and pull it out just wiggle it around it will come out okay once we got this one now we can actually flip it over and we're gonna work on the front side on the front side we're gonna lift up this uh, front cover just by on a hooking it a little bit and it comes up pretty easy okay now this cable from here we're not going to disconnect it we're just going to leave it like that just loosen it up we need to remove one screw at the back of the drive which is right over here okay remove this black screw tiny one now what you need to do lift up the drive easily upward and the drive will come up pretty easy some of the slim versions they have a cable coming from the bottom to the board i have another video for that model this model doesn't have the ribbon cable on the bottom okay now we're going to untangle the wi-fi cables all the way to the front also you can go ahead and clean up all this dust over here untangle the wi-fi cable bring it to one side now rip this white tape over there we're gonna uh, uh, just pull this cable upward this straight okay remember where the contacts were facing inward so don't put it the other way around don't put the blue side that way the blue side has to be towards the right the outside and this exposed pin are facing inward 
This is your switch on power, power on button and eject button. Next, we're gonna remove a few black screw, tiny ones on the board. So let's start from this corner, mid right here. There's one right here. These thermal pads you can change if you want to, but it's not necessary. So let's go ahead and remove this one. Remove this one over here. Two. And one right by the power jack. Three. And we want to remove these two screws by the hard drive caddy. So remove these two. These are the white ones. So now we're going to lift up the board holding from the fan. Just pull it out. And this is the bottom cover. You can go ahead and clean it up. The Wi-Fi antennas, you can just leave it there. If you want to remove the Wi-Fi antennas, there's one screw on every one of them. If you want to replace it. First thing first, what we want to do, we want to remove this uh, BIOS battery. So it's a battery CR2032. I'll leave the link in the description. If it doesn't hold the configuration date and time or anything like that, you might want to change this battery. To replace the battery, you just have to pull this trigger backward and the battery is just going to come up pretty easy and then just lift up the battery this side has to go down and the flat the uh, text on the top so put down where this trigger is put it under the trigger and then just push it down when you take it out it's from this side so from the trigger side and it will come out all right now we got the battery disconnected and we have the fan cable disconnected what you need to do you want to flip it over upside down and uh, we're gonna remove whole bunch of screws from this side we're gonna start from the sides there's no screw there's one screw right there and they are uh, they have a little tiny arrow beside them these screws can get really tough too so you just have to use a little bit of force there you go all right once we remove the side screws now we're gonna remove the x clamp bracket screws for the CPU and the GPU and we're going to be using a uh, bit number one Phillips and remove the clamp remove the other clamp once you remove the clamp you can go ahead and lift up the bottom cover just lift it up from the fan side upward and then this side it should come out pretty easy and there we have the bottom shield and down here we have the motherboard now the motherboard is not going to get really easily detached from the main board because of the thermal paste is really dry on the heat sink so there is a two way to do it you can actually heat it up with a hair dryer this portion nothing is going to happen heat it up about 30 40 seconds in this area right over here where the clamp is that's going to blend the thermal paste or you can just grab a flat screwdriver and stick it between the top and the bottom one between the PCB, not too much, just a little bit. And you want to hold it like this and you want to go do this side a little bit and then go on the side, do it this side. And now you can see, you heard that pop, that was the thermal paste. Now I can actually go ahead and lift it up from the fan side upward and bring it up. There's this tiny metal here, it just kind of, you have to let it loose. And there we go. And there's the motherboard and there's the thermal paste. And there's a lot, a whole bunch of dust here. We want to clean up all this dust, everything. Look how it, the coloration on this chip is. We're going to fix all that. And that chip is ready so we need to remove this thermal pad pads because this actually does work pretty hard so even if i rub my finger and you can still see that the coloration on that that means it's heating up a lot so and this thermal paste right here is really hard so yeah go ahead and clean up with the air can everything remove these thermal pads if you want to these thermal pads are 0.3 millimeters thick thermal pads 
So grab a 0.3 millimeters or 0.4. It will do the job. So first, let's go ahead and clean up the thermal paste on the CPU and on the GPU. What you want to do, grab a working towel. I'll leave the link in the description again. Well, right, well you want to grab your alcohol and you want to spray it on the, on the towel. Now we're going to do some rubbing right on top, gently, in a circular motion. Just go ahead and rub it in. Let the alcohol do the job. All right, once you did the first pass, rotate the towel, more alcohol, and do the second pass. With the first pass, you remove the excess. With the second pass, you're just cleaning up the whole chip right here. There we go. Now you can use our old toothbrush or new toothbrush, whatever you like, and take it outside and go ahead and remove the dust on the, around the chips, anywhere that you can see dust. Clean up both sides nicely, and we're gonna put this to one side, and we're gonna clean up this heat sink right here. So again, same thing. With an alcohol, let's go ahead and remove the excess of the thermal paste. Okay, we can remove this old thermal pad from here. And uh, we're gonna use a toothbrush and we're gonna go ahead and clean up everything all around it. Now you can, to remove the fan and clean it up nicely, there's two screws holding the fan. So you can remove the fan by removing these two screws. This is a deep cleaning, so if you guys are interested, even I would recommend you guys to do this. Remove this two fan, and you can remove the fan turbine and remove everything garbage is inside there. And go ahead and clean up with a toothbrush everything in here. And yours might have a really whole bunch of dust in here. Clean up the dust and blow the air through. To keep this video short, I'm just not gonna clean it. I'm just gonna show you guys once you clean it up, bring it back over. Put the two screws for these ones. Make sure that the cable are, is facing the same way that you put. Don't put it all the way around, otherwise the cable is not gonna reach to the contact. So make sure the cable is getting in front. All right. There's a thermal pad here. If you want to change, but don't change it. It's where the drive goes. It's not necessary. All right, let's go back on the bottom side. We're gonna do one last pass after cleaning. Well, you don't want any dust or fingerprints on this side of the heat sink. And what you wanna do, you wanna grab yourself the thermal pads, cut the thermal pads with the scissors to the exact length. So do one right here, put it right over, put this one over here. And there was one right over here, so put that one over there. And then you want to cut on a square shape, put it right in the middle. You can do it a little bigger than mine, but eh. I'm going to reopen this and do it again. So cut a nice square shape here. Don't overdo it because there's not going to be enough pressure as long as you cover this uh, metal right here. So. Now what you want to do, grab the board that you cleaned, do another, put another pass over the CPU and the GPU. All right, once you clean up the heat sink and the CPU, what you want to do, you want to grab your uh, Arctic MX4. I would recommend you guys to do this, uh, to use this paste or use a cryonaut, the Grizzly Thermal Grizz Cryonaut. These are the, this is the option number one, it's expensive one. Or you can go second best is an MX4 version. Go with MX4. And as this is a demonstration, I'm using a generic thermal paste. Okay, so what you wanna do, you wanna do a cross line right here. So bring the, do a tiny line right over here and a line right over here. Bring it over. Same thing for the CPU. Do a nice cross right over. 
okay just like that you can do this method with any thermal paste that you have once you got the paste right there and you have the pads right on the other side nicely placed what you want to do you want to grab the IO side and you want to put the IO side down in the connector right there make sure it's nicely in there first and then bring it down slowly and goes all the way down once you reach the bottom don't lift it up again never lift it up again and then next you want to grab the top cover and you want to place it again in the same position put it on top straight and now we're going to grab the screws on the bottom one and we're going to screw where the arrows are Uh, once you got this side the screws, then you want to grab the, your X clamp. I also recommend you, you guys, you see this kind of curve it has, just give it a little more curve, just bend it a little bit backward so you get a little more pressure towards the CPU and the GPU. So, this is the job for this X clamp. On the other models, they actually have a really harder metal to bend, so it was much better than this ones. Once you have this one in here, you want to put a screw for it. Just don't tighten it up too much so you want to put it first softly in there and then hold it down with your thumb put it in do a little bit of few turns on this one and then go back to other side so you want it to like a three four turn in there and three four turn in on the other screw just like that this way they is the thermal paste is going to spread nicely over the uh, cpu or the gpu same thing here you want to just put it down first, do a few turn, and then come here, put this one in, push it down the metal with your thumb, and then make sure it goes nicely, evenly in there. Do a few turn, come back on this one. This way you have spread the thermal paste evenly on the all over the CPU and the GPU. All right, now we're gonna flip it over. First, we're gonna connect the fan cable. Just push it in. It goes only one way in. Okay. Grab the new battery or old battery that you have, the CR2032. Remember the where the clip was right here in this corner? It goes down first underneath and then push it inward. Next, you wanna grab the bottom cover tray. Grab the bottom tray that you cleaned as you guys can see i didn't clean anything so just for you guys i'm doing this video put this contact right over there it has to go right inside grab the grab it from the fan pull the cables wi-fi cables out of the way put the io side down first make sure the cable is not underneath put this side at the back down and then bring it over make sure these wi-fi cables are not in your way it has to be on the top and once it's sitting nicely in place what you want to do is run the wi-fi cable by the fan to the sides and then it comes over right there leave it right there for now so we're going to put the uh, tiny black screws Mm, there was one right in the middle right there one on this side and the other one was right by the power jack and then two tiny ones by the hard drive contact tray now if you want to change this thermal pad right here this one is a 0.4 millimeter thermal pad you can change it replace it if you want to but again it's not unnecessary before we do anything go ahead and plug in this uh, cable right here okay that will make life much easier right now next you want to grab your on off switch now what you want to do you want to slide this right through the jack evenly make sure it goes evenly inside let me see if you guys can see so i'm putting it over just like that 
don't know if you guys can see just push it even hold it just push it in a little bit of the pins is going to show but as much as you can push it next you want to grab your optic drive and i'm assuming that you guys cleaned it and you want to bring it over run the cable for the wi-fi bring it over and put this notch right here underneath the fan and then bring it over make sure nicely it fits in its place snugly panel right here just push it down evenly run the cable right by the fan make sure it's not going anywhere else All right next we're gonna plug in the cables right here so go ahead and plug in the power cable for the optic drive just push in the contact right there now the ribbon cable again if your lock is down pull the lock up a little bit and then bring the ribbon cable straight inward and make sure this cable is all the way in and then push the lock downward has to be just like that this is the lock opened and this is closed okay now with the wi-fi cables doesn't matter which one goes where it's the same so what you want to do you want to they are snapped on so bring it over the connector and just snap it in you're going to hear kind of click that's what you want to hear bring it over and just push it down all right now we're going to put the black screw right at the back of the drive run the cable nicely make sure it's not obstructing anything okay you can use a little bit of masking tape to keep the cables in place now what you want to do you want to grab your power unit you want to bring it over what you want to do make sure these two contact right here these two pins has to go through here so bring it align it right straight on top move it around once you feel that those pins are inside push this side down all the way make sure you hit that click and on this side you want to connect the jack straight inside the pin here the 12 volt before we put this one in let's go ahead and put the screw so that make it easier so put the flat screws right there one on here and now you can go ahead and put the cable in there otherwise you can still put the screw but you have to move this thing around same thing here we already put the cable so pull the cable to one side and put the screw for the power unit make sure all the cables are in place nicely and we are almost done you want to grab your top cover with the top cover it's very important put the front end down first so there's at these tiny clips right here this clips has to go down first so bring it like a drawer the way that you open it align them straight right there make sure they are nicely aligned and then you want to close it down towards the back and push it down and the front it should be all even now you want to hold it both side like a sandwich you want to flip it over oh look at all this thermal of paste that i had on the table Okay, we can clean the thermal paste with an alcohol on top. That's not a big deal. So you can do a whole bunch of rubbing later on. That's why it's very important. It's very, very important that you clean your table when you're doing the service every five minutes. So you don't want the thermal paste to get in here. So you can clean this one easily. So let's go grab the torque. Number nine that we use, the screw one. Uh, we're going to put the three secure uh, screws right in the front panel. And I hope this video helped you guys out and you guys managed to do your own service. If it did, please click that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And if you guys subscribe, it really helps and motivates me to take requests. And 
and answer your questions. All right, now we're gonna put the long screws. All right, and the last part would be grabbing your, up, uh, your hard drive and you want to put your hard drive just like that, slide all the way down, push it inward, grab this cover, put the cover in an offset position that you removed, just like that, and then push it towards the inward, open this tab right here, and put the last screw right in there. That's the blue one. And close the lid. Next, you want to put this uh, plastic, flat plastics in the mat, and the one right there, and the one that has uh, rubbers in the corners. So I am missing two rubber legs, so just manage it right there. All right, guys, and this is how you service and clean up your PlayStation 3 Slim. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.